In this Mission Control How-To video, we will cover the scheduler component, which provides a calendar-style view of action records and is a great resource capacity planning tool. Some key features include color coding by weekends, holidays, actions, tasks, or events, drag and drop functionality to create, reschedule, and reassign actions. Um, you also have the ability to view each role's hours allocation, which shows the hours scheduled versus the hours available per week, while also taking into consideration holidays. You can view the utilization percentage for a role, where the hours allocated are more than the hours per week, then this will be highlighted red. You have quick access to action detail pages by double clicking on the action and the ability to exclude projects, milestones, and actions if needed. The scheduler is great because you have the ability to view up to 52 weeks at a time and get a long-term view of your projects and actions. The scheduler also includes collapsible sections so that you're only viewing the information for the roles that you need to view at that time. There are a few ways to locate the scheduler from the management path within the mission control console, the scheduler tab within the project overview component, the standalone scheduler tab, as well as the scheduler anywhere component, which can be added to any parent object that a project relates to. When viewing the scheduler, there are two main displays. You can view the scheduler as a timeline, and within the timeline tab, you have the options to control the view, how the column on the left is grouped, and the scale values. The month tab provides a monthly view that is similar to a calendar display. All actions across all projects will be displayed in this tab. And if you use the scheduler filters to filter to an individual role, then holidays that are assigned to that role will also be displayed on the monthly view. Let's take a deeper look into the Timeline tab. The View option allows you to determine what information is being displayed within the timeline, including the financials, hours details, hours totals, actions, and projects. You can group by each role in alphabetical order based on the role's first name or by master team. On each role record, you're able to view the role profile, which will show what teams and skills the role is assigned to as well as the chatter feed for that individual. The scheduler also provides you with visibility into the hours allocation and utilization for each role. To break this down, the scheduled allocation calculates the co total contribution for the actions contained within the timeline view. The scheduled utilization calculates the utilization percentage for the role based on the total contribution by the hours per week. The remaining allocation calculates the effort remaining for the role based on the actions within the timeline view plus any overdue actions that are scheduled and not yet complete prior to the end date of the timeline. This calculation is based on the total contribution of effort minus the hours completed by this role on the actions. The remaining utilization calculates the utilization percentage for the role based on the remaining effort by the hours per week. Let's take a look at the financial view, which will show you the breakdown of the hours scheduled billable value field across all actions that are scheduled to be worked during the timeline. If a user doesn't have field level security access to the hours scheduled billable value field, then the financials will not be available. The shading of the cells reflects the hour shading breakpoint percent values in the scheduler settings. For example, if I set the hour shading breakpoint value to 80% for that role, then once the user hits 80% of the hour scheduled billable value uh, that is assigned to them, then the cell will turn red. This view can only be grouped by role and scaled by day, weeks, or months. The hours detail view will show you a breakdown of the hours assigned to each role. Categorized into the following areas, um, billable hours, non-billable hours, Salesforce events, and holidays. This can only be grouped by role and scaled by day, weeks, or months as well. The only view that you will be able to scale by hour would be the actions view. The hours total view will show you a summary of the hours assigned to each role. Similar to the financials view, 
this view will have shaded cells that reflect the hour shading breakpoints that are set within the scheduler settings. The actions view will show you separate bars for the individual actions assigned to the action owner and contributors for that action. The action view is the only view that supports edits being made to the records. To make edits, double click the action to open the action summary component. This will give you access to the action detail page, related checklist items, related user stories, as well as the chatter feed. You can drag and drop actions to reschedule to a different point in time or adjust the number of days that are assigned to the action. To create an action, navigate to the role that will be the action owner and drag the cursor on the day that you wish to schedule the action for. This will then open up the new action component where you can create the action details as required. You will also be able to access the resource assignment wizard to include contributors, as well as access the Hours Distributor tab. To reassign actions, drag an action from one role to another. This also works for uh, assigning, reassigning a contributor to an action. Another way to view details for the action would be to hover your cursor over an action bar. The fields that are displayed on the hover view are managed from a field set that can be found on the action object within setup. Moving forward, let's take a look at the project view, which will provide a high level summary view of work scheduled. Actions within the same project that are scheduled to occur on the same day or consecutive days will be grouped into one bar. This view is only available in the days, weeks, and months scale. You can also hover over the project bar for a few details on the project. Let's take a look at the scale values. The hour scale will display an hourly timeline. However, you can select how many days are visible from the scheduler settings. Again, this hour scale can only be used on the action view. The days and week scales are displayed based on the number of weeks selected in the scheduler settings. And then the month scale will display the timeline scale per month based on the number of months that are selected in the settings. You can locate the settings by clicking the gear icon in the top right, top right corner. These settings are persistently remembered and are controlled at the individual user level, so your settings won't be projected on someone else's scheduler. The sliders at the top will control how many days, weeks, or months are visible having to do with these scale values. And the display hours allow you to specify the hours that will be displayed on the timeline when using the hours view. For example, you can set this field to begin on the 8th hour and close at uh, 7 p.m. So uh, for the visible days, you'll have four days that are shown that view from 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. You can show tasks and events on the scheduler by marking the checkboxes to true. The hour shading green big point percentage will be used if the sum of the hours scheduled for a role is less or equal to this value, the cell will be shaded green. For the hour shading red breakpoint, if the sum of the hours scheduled for a role is greater or equal to this value, the cell will be shaded red. The display schedule hours and utilization checkboxes, as well as the display remaining hours and utilization checkbox will allow you to um, toggle on and off the view of the scheduled and remaining allocation and utilization figures for each role. When using the actions or projects view, you have the ability to also collapse and expand the roles for individuals. When this feature is marked true, you will see a plus minus button that is between the group by and scale options. When this feature is toggled off, the plus and minus button will be hidden, so you won't be able to see this anymore. By default, the scheduler uses the total hour scheduled as the data source for displaying capacity and allocations. Um, you can also adjust this 
two hours that will be used by choosing one of the following options. Uh, you can set the hour source to the total hours remaining, projected hours remaining, or total projected hours aside from the total hours scheduled. Any option that is selected here will be used across all views within the scheduler. We now have a color reference field that specifies whether the color of the action on the scheduler is driven by the project color field or the color specified in the Gantt chart status value settings. This feature was included in the 1.58 release. Now that we're done reviewing the settings, let's take a look at a few more buttons that are featured on the scheduler. You can filter the scheduler by clicking the icon in the top right corner. Again, this will be controlled at an individual user level. You go, you're able to filter based on a combination of the following records or fields. You can filter by program, project, project categories, action name, action status, roles, team, skills, skills proficiencies, and up to two custom fields on the project, milestone, or action. To save a filter selection, click Save and enter a name after you've populated the filter details um, to access within their saved filters pick list. When a saved filter is applied, it will be remembered every single time that you visit the scheduler. You can also export the scheduler as a PDF using the icon lo located in the top right corner. When you click the icon, you will be able to specify the file name, header text, and footer text prior to generating the PDF. There are a number of ways to navigate the period that's displayed on the scheduler. We have a date picker that allows you to select a specific time to quickly jump to. The solid arrow to the left allows you to move back by seven days whereas the open arrow to the left allows you to move back by one day. The Today button jumps you to the current date. The open arrow to the right allows you to move forward by one day, and the solid arrow to the right allows you to move forward by seven days. Please make sure to save any changes that you make to the scheduler, which will be located right next to the date navigation tool. If there are any unsafe changes, a warning icon will be displayed. The scheduler component has been enhanced to support being added to a page layout of any parent object that a project relates to. So for example, if you've created your own custom lookup fields to other objects on the project, then you will be able to add the scheduler anywhere component to the page layout. Out of the box, the project object has lookup fields to the account, contact, opportunity, and program objects. This feature is only available in Lightning Experience. We do recommend setting a component height to approximately 1000 pixels. If you have any further questions or inquiries on the scheduler component, please feel free to reach out. There's also information provided in the user guide and the knowledge articles, as well as the learning portal. Thank you so much for joining in and be sure to check out our other training videos.